Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon, asking a question today. What good is going to church if you do not know God? And my friends, I want to give you two things to look at that you don't know God, friends. And my job, my objective, my mandate, my purpose, my reason for being on this channel is to help enlighten you that Jesus Christ is the commander and chief of the true ecclesia, the true called out people are under the dominion, the rulership, the reign of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is Jesus. The Bible tells us in Romans, my friend, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you attempt to be a partaker of a religious institution or system and you are not born of the Holy Ghost, you will become just like the men that Jesus challenged in his day. They were scholarly men. They were scribes. Pharisees, chief priests, and elders, but they did not know God. The Bible tells us when Joseph and Mary, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, it was their custom to go to Jerusalem for the Passover every year. And the Bible says when Jesus was 12 years old, that Jesus got separated from Joseph and Mary and his, and his brothers. And Jesus, when they came back, they were, half, they were on their way from Jerusalem and noticed Jesus wasn't with them. The Bible says they went back and looked for him for three days looking for Jesus. Hmm. Follow me, my friends, because I want to share with you something that is vitally important for you to understand. You do not go to church to know God. You go to church to do what the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 2, that they were praising God, breaking bread. They were selling everything amongst themselves, and nobody lacked. That's a true Christian, Christ-centered fellowship where everybody that is in the midst of that fellowship is taken care of. So we have a lot of people making a lot of noise. Do not forsake the assembly of yourself. That's their favorite scripture out of Hebrews chapter four. But my friend, let me help you with this. You must keep that scripture in its context because the writer of Hebrews, who we're not sure who it was that wrote this book, but my friend, what the writer was concerned about is that the people would fall away and go back into sin. So he said, do not forsake the assembly of yourself as a matter of some. Why? Because it should be in the midst of that fellowship that you should be challenged and rebuked of what? Sin. The writer goes on to tell us in chapter four that you should provoke one another as you see the day of the Lord approach. In other words, my friend, you're not in a true Christian fellowship, Christ-centered fellowship, if there is no conversation about sin and if every person that's in that congregation is not taken care of. I said a New Testament church, my friend, according to Acts chapter two, clearly tells us what we're looking for. We are not looking for a king to worship called a bishop. We're not looking for a pastor to bow down and worship. We're not looking to be put under anybody's authority. We are looking simply for fellowship. Because once you are a bona fide citizen in the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ has truly come into your heart, my friend, and he has saved you. He has forgiven you of your sin. Now it's citizenship. You're a citizen in the kingdom and you're simply looking for other citizens to fellowship. But the, the early church, my friend, the Bible says they would uh, congregate at the temple. They would meet at this huge temple. 
and they would move from the temple daily, going to different people's houses, breaking bread, praising God, and continuing in the apostles' doctrine. That's what they did. There was no lifting up bishops. There was no lifting up the master prophet. There was no lifting up the chief apostle. There was no parading of flesh. There was no collars and robes and gold chains in the left pocket. And everybody demanding homage. Look at me, look at me. Everybody jocking my friend for the microphone. There was no praise teams. There was no choirs. There was no, there was no lifting of man. It was all about Jesus. In fact, my friend, if you're in a fellowship and they never hardly ever break bread, it's a ritual that they kind of do to get out the way, which most people do, most churches, you should break bread every time you are with another believer. Oh yes, my friend. If you think that God is that, he, he just go whoop and beat you because you said here, God, I'm consecrating this grape juice. And this, this bread, whether leavened or unleavened, but I am, I am offering this up in remembrance of my Lord and Savior's death, burial, and resurrection. That's what communion is all about. We're communing around the fact that we have a Lord, we have a Savior, and a Master. That's why we're taking communion, because we're communing around Him. Every fellowship should constantly break bread to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. My friends... We've been duped, and many of us are going to church. You are going for the wrong reason. You're congregating. You're under the regimes of men. But let's look at what Jesus was in the temple for. The Bible tells us clearly. I'm asking the question, what good is church attendance if you don't know Jesus? The Bible tells us, because listen, my friends, Jesus put a very profound thought in red in this book and he said my sheep know my voice so if you don't know his voice and you start congregating and you start subjecting yourself to indoctrinations when someone indoctrinates you with a tradition or a so-called teaching from god my friend they are brainwashing you and this is why many people are living in fear, my friend, because they don't know God. They know the voice of the faith apostle and prophet and pastor. They don't know Jesus' voice. That's why the question is on the floor. Hmm, what good is it? You don't know Jesus and his voice. This is what the Bible says. They lost Jesus. He was in Jerusalem. They went back looking for Jesus. And look what the Bible says. And it came to pass, this is Luke chapter 2, verse 46. It came to pass that after three days, they found Jesus, him, in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. Follow me, my friend. And all that heard him, Jesus, were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. Friends, what this is telling us is that Jesus was in the midst of church, communion, congregation. But they were astonished at his doctrine. They were amazed at his wisdom, which tells us, my friend, that Jesus was communing with the Father. He knew God. He was in cornea fellowship with God. And when he went to the temple, where the scribes, the Pharisees, the elders, the Sadducees, all of the big scholarly uh, theological men were, it was Jesus that they looked upon in amazement. A 12-year-old boy who what? Knew God. And of course we know that Jesus was the God-man, the Son of God. But we are to be like our master. We are supposed to follow him. 
Jesus knew God before he stepped in those temples, my friend, to, to challenge them. And I'm saying to you, my friend, if you don't know him before you go up in these congregations, subjecting yourself, submitting yourself to men and women who are brainwashing you because you won't take time to get to know and to study because Jesus was using the word, my friend. He was not using it to throw it up at God. I decree and I declare you're going to do this and do that. Jesus used the word to back up the enemy and to straighten out those religious folk. He would tell them it is written. Oh, we're, you know, we're like our father, Abraham. Jesus like, huh, you don't even know Abraham. And how could Jesus answer many of the questions that he did with such will, wisdom and skill? Because Jesus was a student of the word. Oh, Jesus knew the law of Moses. Oh, yes, he did, my friend. And unless you become a student, because Jesus then asked Mary, he said, no, actually, this is what he said. They said, look what Mary said. They said, son, why has thou thus dealt with us this way? In other words, why did you disappear on us? And Jesus said, behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. That's what Mary said. Excuse me. Then Jesus said, how is it that you sought me? I must, don't you know, I must be about huh, my, my father's business. Jesus associated his time in the temple as business. Not the business we see with all this false doctrine of tithing. Yeah, that's business for the apostate church. Jesus was doing business. What was he doing? He was checking on their doctrine. He was, he was, he was hearing God in that relationship with God through prayer and meditation and coming in the temple because Jesus was setting up strategy because he knew as he aged, he was going to have to come right back to that temple and deal with those fat Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of the law, and the elders and the high priest. Jesus knew, I'm locking up and I'm getting loaded. He was not coming to the temple as a student. He was coming about business. Follow me or you're going to be lost. Many of you go to church to learn God. And the other six days of the week, you're chasing after the world. And then we have some of us, we love God, but we won't obey God. And really to love God is to obey God. But some of you, you know the word, but you're not doing the word. And so we go into the fellowship looking for somebody to prop us up and breathe life into us. And don't get me wrong, my friend. We are the body of Christ. We're here to help one another. But my friends, the church is where you come to be edified, exhorted, receive instruction. But that is not where you develop that relationship with God. It is daily walking, loving him, worshiping him, praising him. And in this hour, my friend, you cannot be off in a fellowship laid out on the floor, so-called speaking in tongues, passed out somewhere, devils running all over the church. You don't have no discernment, no vigilance, no sobriety out in public, passed out. Talk about this, the Holy Ghost. There ain't no Holy Ghost, my friends, because in this hour, there is so much deception. You got to be vigilant. Jesus went in the temple to do business because Jesus was in fellowship with God. So when he came, Jesus had an agenda. It was business. That's why he was the one orating, giving wisdom. I'm not saying, my friend, for young Christians and people that are coming to know Christ, my friend, you got to pick up that book. That's why God wants us to know the word of God. That's why he wants us to study to show ourselves approved because you got to know how to fight. You got to know how to discern a false teacher. You have to know how to discern one who is coming after your pocketbook, your wallet, your 401k, your house, your car. They'll take it all from you, my friend, all in the name of Jesus. So if you trying to go to church and you don't know God yet, oh, you just asking for trouble, my friend. 
Oh yeah, you asking for trouble because God is spirit. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. We are not saved by grace through the church, through a congregation of sinners, because that's what we all are, saved by grace. The church is where you congregate. It's where you receive instruction, encouragement, but you, my friend, do not use the church to know God. You go to church to fellowship with like-minded people who are concerned about you. And if you, my friends, don't understand that the early church took care of one another, what good is going to church to give out all your money be, be used, abused, and, and, and saturated with false doctrine that has caused many of you to believe God is your Santa Claus. So you use God, my friend. Many of you, you just use them. That's why you're depressed and downcast because you've been serving a false God. What good is going to church but you do not know God. You are there to be indoctrinated by false God worshipers. And that God is money, 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 money. Oh, yes. That's why we have a church on every corner, my friend. That's why we have them bursting at the seams because everybody wants to get in on that dime. Oh, yes. Friends, if you don't know him by spirit, you in trouble. Because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Enoch, and Noah, and Adam did not have a church to go fellowship at. And these men knew God. Do you know him? Why you fussing over the church and scared if I don't go to church? Do you know him? God bless you, my friend. Till next time.